About an hour and a half southwest of Regina, past vast fields of canola, you'll find the town of Ogama. It is home to Solo Italia, a beloved local restaurant that serves up traditional thin crust Italian pizzas. Ogama also offers the Southern Prairie Railway, an authentic pioneer experience for tourists that want to take a ride into the past and travel past fields of antelope. 30 minutes later, you'll arrive in the town of Bengoff. Dali Foley has lived there her entire life. She says the people have kept her there. In 2016, Foley's drugstore suffered a massive fire. The whole community came together to help. I had every age of person helping me. Um, the elderly were even on their hands and knees, washing my floor, painting the walls, trying to set us up so that we could uh, continue with our drugstore until our new building was built. Ben Goff is best known for its annual Gateway Music Festival. It's a mix of established acts like the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band and Steve Earle, and homegrown Saskatchewan talents, including Coulter Wall, Belle Plain, and the Garys. It takes a community involvement, and there isn't really one person in this town that doesn't help. And if that isn't community love, I don't know. It's amazing. Canadian country music artist Corb Lund played the first ever Gateway Festival in 2004 and has come back multiple times since. Lund was set to play this year before the festival was postponed due to COVID-19. For him, Bengoff is a special place. I'm kind of biased because I'm a rural person, so I think it's cool when people have access to that stuff outside of the major centers. And actually, I think it's so cool because because urban people come there and see that it can be, it's probably come there and see that it's pretty awesome. Bengoff's small businesses give the town a charm that festival goers and visitors love. One favorite for people passing through are the storms, slushies with soft serve at the Bengoff Cafe. Right across the street from the cafe is the Bengoff and District Museum. Oh, hi. Welcome. hi! Welcome to our museum! Thank you! The building is a treasure trove of items from Bengoff's coal mining days, farming history, war veterans, and indigenous artifacts. One of Ben Goff's favorite pieces of history is its infamous water tower. In 1979, Pat Craven was working as a teacher at the local school. And all of a sudden, I heard this giant, like, boom, like a crash, like an earthquake, because you almost felt like your feet vibrated underneath. And then we look out. The Ben Goff water tower had toppled over and landed in front of a nearby skating rink. No one was hurt, but there was one victim, Underneath that collapsed water tower was a little half ton. The caretaker went out there and he had so many special words to say about the condition of his truck. Finally, you cannot go to Ben Goff without driving out a half an hour further into the Big Money Valley. These badlands are packed with stunning views, buttes and sprawling pastures. Castle Butte is one of the most popular tourist destinations in southern Saskatchewan. The hike up the rock is a steep one, but it's simply a must for the view. The sandstone butte is a relic of the Ice Age and was a landmark for the indigenous peoples. Standing at the top of the butte, it's not hard to understand why the people of Bengoff love the region so much. As Saskatchewan waits for the return of mass gatherings like the Gateway Festival, it's good to know that there's so much more to love about Bengoff and the Big Muddy Valley. Laura Sharpaletti, CBC News, Bengoff.